This is Michael Smith of MedPage Today. I'm in Vancouver at the meeting of the Pediatric Academic Societies. Respiratory syncytial virus, which attacks young children, has been treated for several years now with a monoclonal antibody, palivizumab, and clinical trials had shown that the drug was very efficacious. But what does it do in the real world? Uh, Dr. Andrew Racine of Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York City and colleagues addressed that question. The real question from the standpoint of policy is that once that's been shown and you make the drug widely available to free living populations in the real world where it will be given in real world conditions, will it have the impact that you think it will on the entire population? The efficacy trials, the clinical trials, uh, showed that the drug actually prevented RSV. It also showed that the drug reduced hospitalization time in children who actually did get RSV. Dr. Racine and his colleagues studied that latter question. Even among children who were hospitalized, the severity of the disease were, appeared to be less. They stayed fewer days in the hospital. They had less likelihood of having to go to the ICU. Essentially, the intensity of treatment that they needed, even if they did get infected, was less. That's what we were looking at. We wanted to see if you looked at how long children with RSV infection stayed in the hospital, or you looked at the charges, the hospital charges that they generated for those hospitalizations, was that different in the era after palivizumab was available in California than it had been in the era before palivizumab was available? The effectiveness trial, as Dr. Racine calls it, appears to show that the monoclonal antibody is actually having a beneficial effect. So the result was that lengths of stay for all hospitalizations in children in the before period and after period comparison went down. Now our before period was 1995 to 1997 and our after period was 2005 to 2007. So essentially over those 10 years the lengths of stay for hospitalizations for children in general went down. However, the lengths of stay for hospitalizations for RSV went down to a greater extent. So over the same two time periods, that 10 year interval, the charges that are generated by hospitalizations for children went up, went up for everybody. But the rate at which they were going up was greater for regular kinds of hospitalizations than it appeared to be for RSV hospitalizations. So the rate of increase in charges went up for RSV hospitalizations, but at a rate that was less than what we would have anticipated just looking at the underlying trends. Uh, but the clinical take-home message remains a little bit unclear, Dr. Racine said. The bottom line for docs is stay tuned. And the reason I say that is because this is a very beginning look at this question. The real question that docs like me and like others who treat children want to know is really who should be getting this medication? And this particular study doesn't answer that question, but we are going to be looking at the data from California in more detail, and we should be able to get a better answer to that question when we look at those other data. That is, we want to know of the children who are in particular risk categories. Do these children seem to benefit more than those children? Children who are at specific ages at the time that the RSV epidemic begins. Are they at a particular advantage relative to others? These are the kinds of questions that docs want to know because, as you point out, the take-home message is, who should I give this to? And when should I give it to them? And over how long a period of time? And this particular study really doesn't get at that yet, but it does say that there are some, some intriguing uh, tendencies here, and we really should be looking in greater detail to see sort of how they play out in specific populations. In Vancouver, this is Michael Smith, MedPage Today.